is going on youtube welcome to the sunday show it's brendan from market makers guys we're gonna look at bitcoin look at how the equities are behaving here in the futures market see what we can expect i am expecting a base for a bear rally to be put in rally up fall back down on our face but having said that the big caveat this week guys Wednesday, this CPI report, that's the inflation report in America, last month was the highest so far, 8.6. Will we have a higher month? If we have 8.6, 8.7, the market could easily fall on its face. If we have 8.3, 8.4, showing the Fed is making progress, the market will react. Remember, half of trading is psychology and sentiment. So who knows, but that's Wednesday. Until then, most likely going to see some chop, just some volatility in the range, but let's look at what we can see here on our charts. Let's go back to Bitcoin on the weekly, guys. Bitcoin on the weekly. So here's our GAN wave pattern, right? My price pulse pattern. As you can see, we did wick up to the 200, what is that, the 200? I think that's the 200. It could be a 233. That's the 200. So we did wick up to the 200 and got rejected. What is that like, guys? Just like the Russell. Identical movement to the Russell. So as you can see here, we do have this B wave projection based on Fib time, July 25th. So let's see what happens here. You know, the Fed is off in August. So it'll be really interesting to see if they come in with a hot rate hike like 0.75 again, how the market will react. Bitcoin's going to track the tech. Bitcoin's going to track to the Russell. It's going to attract to the tech and the NASDAQ. So we'll see what ends up happening in the marketplaces. But they all are looking to base. But Bitcoin and the Russell are both below the 200, 233. Still like this layout here. If this has to come down to a lower target, we will pull this down. But we're still looking for that big bear rally up. Getting rejected at the 200 is not a good way to start. Looking at this weekly chart... We can see our downward projections here for support, 618 at 18,230. Remember, that's the key one to hold, right? Then we're going to start hitting levels beneath that with the one fib at 9,482. Ooh, people will get really, really, uh, people will lose their uh, SHIT if that happens, right? I have to be careful what I say. I can't talk about certain things in YouTube, as you guys know. They bury me in the algorithm. So we'll see what happens with that. But let's go ahead and look at the daily. So on the daily, what are we doing on the daily? On the daily, we exited our Wyckoff range, fell back in, and we're trying to hold our base. You see this? You can see this in the smaller time frames with more candles, but this is what we're doing on the daily. Now, Money Flow says we are overbought here, okay? So we're overbought. We need to hold this higher low up here. This would be our base range for our pivot. That's the 50 moving down, okay? The 50 moving average coming down at 24,681, 144, and the 200, 233. This is my market ceiling for Bitcoin. I don't make those videos that say 80k incoming and things like that guys because you have so much resistance above you you have two-thirds less market cap that means two-thirds of the money has left this space so I'm being realistic this is the 45 angle going back to the pandemic low and here you can see this would roughly be about 36 somewhere in there 36 2 between the 200 233 that's an area with the 45 is going to be heavy resistance if Bitcoin was ever able Able to muster some type of rally up to that level now let's look at a couple wave projections here and then we'll check out the volume see what we're doing here on the volume okay pulling down this wave projection um, I'm gonna get a bigger wave projection so we can get some higher numbers here let's go shrink this down let's go to this previous swing low up here you see this let's get a larger wave projection swing low swing high Swing low. I like this one. This lays out really nice. This 618, you can see it rejected us a couple of times here in range. So you have the one fib lining up perfectly with the 50 on the moving average on the daily time frame, okay? And then you have the 144, 233, 200. 200 and 233 are at the 2618, 36K. So I really like how this fib lays out, gives you some clear. Uh, identifiable resistances here combined with moving averages all right so that's just something that you need to watch if we do get some type of pump up we're gonna watch that 24k area but on the smaller time frames we're gonna see exactly what that looks like with other wave projections are there are any indicators here we want to look at let's go ahead and look at our Donchian here 
Donchian, we're still near the bottom of our range. You can see we could come up here in the Donchian range at 31,807. Uh, you know, again, that's going to require some momentum to move up like that. Um, Arnubia, I guarantee you the heavy supply line is up with the 200, 233. It is, okay, just lots of resistance from being such a bearish downtrend for such an extended period of time. And let's check out our Ichi while we are here as well. Ichi, we still got room between the cloud, but that cloud is closing in, but the cloud is tucking in a little bit as you just continue to range, okay? So you're just continuing to range. Now let's go ahead and talk about the volume, guys. So looking at the volume here, uh, these are average volume bars and then below average volume bars, okay? So we have a little bit of average volume. The bulk volume here since mid-June has been below average, below the moving average, below average. So, you know, again, you, you're forming a double top structure right here, but you're also forming your cup, trying to form your cup pattern on top of the Wyckoff trading range. So just another thing to pay attention to. Looking at the eight hour time frame, let's go ahead and pull this up. Let's get some different wave projections here, guys. Eight hour time frame, we'll go ahead and pull this. A little bit more current wave feature here. Do something like this. Swing low, swing high, swing low. And then look at that. You got to the 1618 at 22439. And just like on the daily time frame, you can see you're trying to hold your base, right? Your cup pattern. Give us our pivot, which is that rollover, price moves in waves, and then get that breakout to back to the upside. Okay? That's what we're looking to do here, but you have to hold this. If you fall back in your trading range, then that negates the breakout. But you know, you are making patterns, I bet you here. So if we look at this, let's go ahead and tuck this in. Do something like this. Just go to that swing low. And probably right back about here at the 1618 would make sense. So something like that. This is a dragon pattern. Dragon patterns are double tops and double bottoms. And, you know, like I spoke about many times before, Gan talked about this, the natural halving and doubling in the marketplace. Here you can see almost a 0.5 retracement from this move. And from the B to D, this would be a, almost a 100% retracement, a halving and a doubling in the marketplace, okay? So this is something that you could see Bitcoin do because this is the 1618 at 22,439. You could see Bitcoin come up find its support just like it did, come back up again, right? Get some more bullish momentum, come back up again. If it fails at the 1618, the golden ratio, this is telling you there's a possibility here if these FIB ratios that this will play out as a double top, okay? And then of course, if you break that neckline, we'll go ahead and get a measured move. You guys know I don't like measured moves, but I'll go ahead and take a measured move. I prefer FIB waves, but we don't have candles yet on that side. So we're just gonna imagine it comes up to where the point B is. Grab that. Throw it down here. Looking at Bitcoin dropping back down to like 18.6, 18.7. So basically back testing this bottom range here. Okay. That's what that double top could in theory do if it played out in that fashion. Now you can always drop more. You can always have this double top not even come up here. Or this could be your pivot to the upside. Okay. So just be aware of this pattern is here. As you guys know, we just traded a dragon pattern. What a couple weeks ago, how time flies looking at the money flow guys, we are oversold here. You see this we're oversold. So it looks like you may be able to hold this base. If you can hold this base, I do expect that move up. Watch this trade guys, boys and girls at home. Watch this trade. 1618, 22, That is where you got to before and a strong rejection. Okay. We can go ahead and measure that rejection as well from here to the base was a eight percent eight spot two four percent move okay obviously with any amount of leverage that can be a very sizable move so just be aware of that guys and of course guys if you want our trade signals definitely check out our telegram in the video description check out our discord with the join button right underneath this video where you get ta conversation with 11,000 plus people professional traders that's all in the room guys our exchanges bitget where we trade i'm going to give you an update on that tournament tomorrow as well that tournament's going awesome. Congratulations, everybody competing in it. And Simple FX, where you can get up to $5,000 instant bonus to trade the equities markets. Everything in the video description 
for you. So this looks like this could come to fruition and we'll see if this 1618 would hold or if we would continue to pump up. Now on the eight hour time frame, your 200, 233 are higher. They're up there. The split, the difference between the two, about 26.8. But the four hour is what I really want to look at. And that's what we're going to look at in the equities as well, okay? Four hour time frame. Wyckoff played out beautifully. You can see we also got up to this top of the Donchi. And you see that got a spike up. Now, there's a bunch of things going on here. So let's, let's take some of this off so we can go over this one by one. Because this is an important time frame. As you guys know, I've spent many videos just talking about the four hour 200 233 but you can see this is a very important time frame and let's go ahead and lay out our fib wave from that swing low up to that swing high down to that swing low and then look what you get you get your 1618 you wick it okay that's how that's how important it is to accurately lay out your fibs you wick it but now you have the 200 and 233 descending this is your whole 55 we'll go ahead and take the hole off there so it doesn't confuse anybody and so we have our 200 233 we have the 1618 we have price descending wanting to try to make this cut pattern to come back up okay but just like before guys this can easily be your double top if you fail here okay if you come back up hit the gan fan resistance hit the 1618 get between the 200 233 you just end up rolling over and making a double top giving you dissension back testing this bottom range if you're bearish here you're falling down lower okay so this is a real possibility perhaps a very strong probability again I tie the markets unlike many other people as you guys know I tie the markets very closely to the equities and to the data driven markets that we are in which means that CPI report again if that CPI report comes in low Bitcoin is not an inflation hedge clearly okay it's not an inflation hedge if that CPI comes in low you're going to see the markets rally we're going to look at that on the four hour time frame on the equities markets but Bitcoin's the same way you can see it wants the base here on the four hour time frame it wants to hold up here get reaccumulation and try the 200 and 233 notice where this is because the Russell is in an extremely similar situation on the weekly on the four hour very important to watch this time frame okay so let's look at a couple more things and we'll go ahead and flip to the equities as well what do we want to look at here we already looked at the Don Chien. let's throw Ichi on here so Ichi, as you can see, we have the Vero, Kumo twist going on here. Very narrow support clouds, right? We get, we're getting a more billowy support cloud here if we can stay up here. And I do anticipate, you know, like I said, the chop in the market. I could easily see us staying up here. I think you want to test this. Remember, price always rises to resistance or falls to support. You have risen through resistance here on the four-hour time frame. Didn't quite test your 200, 233. I think you're going to get another shot at it, especially if the market get a little bit bullish or a little bit more bullish to on the volatility side okay if they just start ranging more but range up higher you can see Bitcoin come up and test this and again that will be a nice trade potential okay so we can just mark that off once again this will be the same as it is basically on the eight hour time frame looking something like that maybe you get there to the GAN fan resistance but it depends where these moving averages are as well right so this can be anywhere in here so we could see where this gets to I like to put it with either the GAN or with the fib resistance and we can go ahead and bring that over to that swing low down there and we have our dragon pattern double top once again watching that one six one eight closely let's go to the DXY real quick guys DXY this thing is just parabolic, trading at 106 spot 929. Look where it broke into the new GAN channel. You see that? Let's go ahead and open this up. Broke into the new GAN channel and you're at the base. So technically you have this whole range. And where does this range take you up to? Oh, the previous bubble crash. The Y2K.com bubble crash up there at 120. And you can see we're at the bottom of this range. As the markets leg down, when they do initiate a second leg down, if the Fed doesn't pivot beforehand, if the Fed just continues to do what it's doing, the markets will rally as always. There's bear market rallies, big bull traps, and then they will fall back down and you will see the dollar continue to rise as the Fed fights inflation, okay? Inflows going into the dollar and this is just, you're going to see this continue to rise. And I totally expect, it's very strongly in the realm of possibility, we're getting back to 120 again just like we did in the dot-com crash okay and then this will start to descend when the markets bottom out wherever that's going to be 
And then you see money flowing back into the assets, back into the markets, and you will see the dollar. Especially, you know, there's there's twists here because, as you guys know, if the Fed stops raising rates too early, which they will, you run the risk of stagflation, which is a contracting economy and relatively high inflation. The thing that irks me, here's my little rant, the thing that irks me is all day long on the business news, all they talk about, like on CNBC, is peak inflation. I think we're at peak inflation. Well, great. What does that mean? What does that mean to the average person? So if inflation peaked out at 8.6, let's say, and let's say this report comes in at 8.3, that's still 8.3% inflation. Okay, that doesn't mean any prices at all are coming down. Nothing. And that also means you are making less money. And if you just keep this and you just forecast this out, let's say the Fed can get inflation down to 8% or 7%. Let's just be generous and say 7% this year. And let's say inflation is 7%, 6% next year. So you're looking at 13% of your money, of your earnings eaten up. How many of you are going to get, say, a 15% raise in the next year? Probably not many people, especially if the economy keeps contracting. If businesses struggle, they will be less likely to give out raises. So right now, even if inflation, if the Fed can do, pull some miracle and get inflation all the way down to 5%, that's still 5%. If you don't get a 5% pay raise every year, you're not even breaking even. You're losing purchasing power. You're losing money. Okay, and that's also 5% price rises in everything. And as you guys know, it doesn't work out as an even 5%. You can see those spikes go up higher like we are in food. The UN is forecasting a world record, right? A new record for the amount of people, 345 million plus people that face starvation this year. 345 million plus people due to inflation, due to supply chain, due to conflict around the world, shortages of commodities like wheat and things like that, uh, oil production, you need energy to produce food, lots of things going on, guys. So it's just really, um, it's really a crazy time to be honest with you. Let's go ahead and pull up, let's look at our indices really quickly before this gets too long. So on the weekly time frame, guys, we'll do weekly and we'll do four hour here on the indices. So the weekly time frame, you can see we're opening this new candle on the S&P, the broader market. And this is up here above our support line. And you have your 200 and 233 down below you. So I mean, this looks like there, I mean, right now it's just holding its range that it's been in, okay? But we're looking to try to get some type of bear market rally. That's what the market really wants to do. So we'll see if the market can pull it off. But CPI guys, here we are on the four hour time frame, just like Bitcoin, just like many things, below the 200 and 233, okay? Above our whole 55, below the 200, 233. Very keen to watch this. We're down a little bit here in the uh, futures market, not much. Uh, 15 points. Okay. So we're down a little bit here. You can see we got rejected twice already. So, you know, we're going to try to hold this whole 55, but just like in Bitcoin, look at the shape you're making. You have the double top shape already too. Okay. So if that CPI comes in hot, I think most of your marketplaces, the indexes in Bitcoin are going to end up looking something like that. You're going to end up getting that dragon pattern, that double top type pattern, just like this, right? Break your neckline, come back down again, and you're back trading in a lower range. Or if the bearishness continues, you descend, okay? So let's look at the NASDAQ. NASDAQ on the weekly, same exact situation, opening up higher. 200, 233 are below you. Let's go to NASDAQ on the four hour. NASDAQ led the way here on the four hour. Look at the progress the NASDAQ made on the four hour. NASDAQ got above the 618. You see that? It's coming back down the back test. It got above the 200, 233. It struggled here. You see that? It struggled. It got above it, fell back between it, pumped back above it. And again, all of this will depend exactly on what happens with that CPI. If that number comes in hot, I expect this to roll over, okay? But you know, markets are erratic, gotta watch them. Uh, money flow, we are still above on the bullish side, but below the cloud. Interesting, we'll see how this plays out here. This is almost like the mirror image of this double top. You have the first peak higher, comes back down, second peak lower, you see that? Here you have the first peak lower, second peak higher. So again, we'll see if this holds up or if you end up breaking this and essentially the 200 or 233 is almost your 
neckline, well, really the 0.5 fib, okay? So if you do break that and do come down, that's just going to be another bearish market indicator. But if you can hold this and try to make some progress up on the NASDAQ, you can look up towards 12,513, which would be a 400 point move, roughly 450 points. That would be a nice move up. Again, that's a good, strong trading day plus one. OK, so that could be a nice move up for a rally. Let's look at the Russell. Russell, just like Bitcoin, below the 200, 233, wicked into it, got rejected. But we're holding a higher candle at the moment, just like Bitcoin. OK, so let's look at the Russell on the four hour. So four hour here, we have the Russell. And just like all the other indexes, just like Bitcoin, you're getting that pattern, okay? You have this broken double top here. You wanna to try to hold this. You have the 200, 233. You see the market symmetry, all of these indexes in the four hour time frame are either about to fight their 200, 233 or the NASDAQ, the only one is just above the 200, 233. But I do expect chop just like we had here all week. Okay, I expect chop watching this chop back and forth and see if we just hold this range until that CPI comes back out. And we'll be watching for rejections, watching for flippings, okay? You gotta flip the 200, 233, get above it, and everything, every asset class, including Bitcoin. That's what you gotta watch, okay? So we'll be paying attention to that as well. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you guys had a fantastic weekend, my friends, and another video coming tomorrow. Talk to you guys soon.